Okay, Shabbat Shalom. People, let me just say, I want to give a recap on the video that I did. It was a 30-minute video about the meaning of spiritual warfare. Okay, just to let you all know, having secular authority is being leadership of the world. Spiritual authority is having authority of God's kingdom. When a called out one says that they have spiritual authority, that's saying that God has given them by grace, has granted them authority, spiritual authority from the kingdom, of the kingdom, to be in this world of Satan to rebuke. The demons to rebuke Satan, to rebuke the evil spirits that's in people of this world. That's what that is saying. When someone says, I have spiritual authority, that's saying that God has granted his chosen one with the authority to rebuke evil spirits that's in people of this world. The evil spirits that's in people could be and, and is located also in secular authority havers of this world. So when I made the other video about the two-faced video saying that you have the authority the spiritual authority to rebuke your mother, to rebuke your father, to rebuke your boss, your supervisor. That's what I meant. When you have spiritual authority by father, you have the right, you have the privilege to rebuke. To call people out on their wickedness. Whether they your mama, your daddy, the president, a judge, the police, huh? the CEO of the company. It don't matter who they are. If these people have demons in them and they're wicked, we and you as Authority figures of the kingdom, spiritually, spiritually, spiritual authority. If you have spiritual authority granted by God, you have the right to rebuke them. You have the right. We have the right to call them out on their shenanigan. Yes, we have been given that right, that privilege. Once we believe in God, once we believe in the son who God sent, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. Once we believe that, we accept Christ in our life and we turn our ways and we repent. And he, he give us conversion through the Holy Spirit, which is begotten. Once we go through all that and we receive that, we receive power. We receive spiritual power at that point. Can't nothing stop us unless we allow Satan and his demons and folk to stop us. But we have the right. We have been joined into his family. We have the right. Come on now. We have the right. It's called a privilege to become part of God's family. Halloween. To become part of the kid. It's just like saying that you go get your driver's license. And you pass. Because you took the, the test. And you studied. And you drove appropriately with the, with the car. You have been granted with a privilege of having your license. That's a privilege. That's not saying, man, you know, you owe me my license. I'm 21 now. I got to get my license. You better give it to me. I'm 21. I got, I got the right to drive. No. A privilege is when you've done good to receive that. Or when you when you have been sought favor to, to receive it. Now, I'm not going to say that we done good to receive this type of privilege by God. No, it's not by us, us being a good person to receive it. We have this by God's 
grace. But what I'm saying, we have to take a part with keeping it by obeying God's commandments. We have to be obedient at this point. We have to repent, meaning with this blessing, we can't go back to our old ways. We cannot go back. That's just like going back to your own vomit. You can't do that or you will lose that privilege. Yeah, you're 21 now. You have a full-blown driver's license now. You don't need your mommy and your dad that or someone older than you, 21, to drive with you now. You have your, your drive. You grown now. You got your driver's license. Now, it's up to you to keep it because you can lose your license, right? You can lose your license by what? Driving against the law. DUIs. Drugs in the car. Passing, uh, uh, not obeying the traffic laws. Passing red lights and speeding. Oh, the list goes on on how you can lose your driver's license. Once you lose your driver's license, you have lost the privilege to drive. Legal. You have lost that because you were not willing to obey the laws of driving. Same thing with being called by God. When we are called, we have received salvation. We have been saved. We have been called out to teach. That's a privilege. And when we disobey God, when we go against his commands and his laws, we will lose that. So all these liars out here talking about you can't lose salvation. They, they have demons in them. We have to rebuke them type of people as well because they are liars. Once you have been saved on this earth as a called out one, you have received salvation after you repent. He's not giving people his mystery just to be giving it to him. He gives it to those who have the Holy Spirit in them because he wants them to serve his purpose. This is not a game, man. This is not a game. Everybody just flying around it. I want to be called. I want to be saved. I want the Holy Spirit. I get it. The pastor was just giving out Holy Spirit. He was just going around giving out holy water. This is not like that. That's a lie. Once you have received that, you have to keep it by doing being obedient. You have to be obedient. I'm trying to break this down. You have to be obedient. So now we may make mistakes. We may slip, but we have to hurry up and go and repent. And we have to mean it, meaning that by our character, we cannot go back to doing what we used to do. That caused, that caused us to go and repent in the first place. This is not a game. All that with God love me anyway. No, that's not how that's going. Yeah. God loved the world. That's why he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. That was it. That was the gift. That was the blessing that he loved the world. That's what he did because he loved the world. But how dare you continue after Yeshua died on the cross for your dumb sins? How dare you continue to live in sin? Talking about, well, I'm good. I'm straight. He died on the cross. So, you know, he loved me anyway. That's not how that's going. You're going to get rebuked. Satan is a liar from the pit of hell. You cannot continue living in sin. You're going to die. If you don't repent. Now. Those who have spiritual authority, we have a privilege to call out people who even may have secular authority. If you're living wicked, we are rebuking you. That's what Daniel did to King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> That's what Jesus told the high priest. If I'm pronouncing his name right, Caiaphas or Caiaphas, whatever his name is. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Pontus, Pilate, all these high priests. Yeshua stood ground and told them what they didn't want to hear. It hurt their feelings, but so what? How dare you hurt the high priest's feelings? What? I'm truth. Same here in this shenanigan world of Satan. The principalities, his government. He's the prince of the power of the air. People get it twisted. God ain't got his kingdom in his wickedness. We have the right to rebuke all evil people. Whether you are a judge, a lawyer, a doctor, the, the president, if you are a chancellor, <laughs> dictatorship in Germany, if you are a boss at Burger King, 
your mama, your daddy, all that. It's not saying that we just, yeah, we're going around disrespecting our elders or we're going around disrespecting people of of leadership of the world. And all. No, that's not it. No, we're going around rebuking evil, evil spirits that's in these people. That's the beauty of having spiritual authority. We get to call these people out. And guess what else? No harm would be put upon us. No harm. Now, it may be worldly consequences, but so what? Worldly consequences. Oh, I'm going to fight her because she keep calling me out on my shenanigans. I'm going to get him to lose this and that and other because, you know, he keep calling me out. He keep teaching. He keep preaching. It may be some of that, but God got us, though. See, when we go through this and we have to stop teaching over there, he prepare us to go somewhere else. Hallelujah. That's all. Right now, our season is to be over here and teach and rebuke. That may be days, months, years. And then when that's done and over with, he locate us somewhere else like he did with Paul. Huh? No, 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 no. That's our duty now as called out ones. We are here to rebuke the demons that's in people. That's why I'm trying to tell these fake chosen ones on YouTube. Everybody who call themselves called, but they don't want to be rebuking people. They don't want to hurt people's feelings. They want to pamper people's emotions because they want you two to pay them. <laughs> they want the likes. They want the, the, uh, the subscribers. Every time you click on one of their channels, the first thing they say before they start teaching or before they start pampering is, Oh, yeah, click on my channel and subscribe and hit the like button. When you hear that on a so-called chosen one channel, Turn, click it off because it's about them. Who cares about how many subscribers you got? Who cares how many people like your, your videos? This is not what this is about. This is just a modern way of getting the kingdom out there. That's it. They didn't have that back then in BC. They didn't have social media and stuff like that. This is just a quick way for us to reach the world through social media. But at the same time, we can't be worrying about likes and subscriptions and, and, and YouTube pumping our channels up. I don't care about that. Now, no, because let me tell you something. On a few of these videos I just did in the last couple of weeks, I got thousands of viewers. But that don't mean that thousands of people were saved. That don't mean that a thousand people understand the, the laws of God. Not at all. One or two people probably got saved. One or two people probably understood that. Now, what difference does that make? I'm not happy that 2,000 people viewed the video and then none of them get saved or did none of them uh, decide to go repent. What, what, what does that matter? Hallelujah. I would rather be happy about five views on one of my videos and all five or either four of them decided to go repent than care about 2,000 views and none of them repent. None of them got saved. That's, that's ridiculous. I don't care about none of that. So anytime you click on somebody's channel, they probably called and chosen. They tell about, yeah, you know, before I start teaching, uh, hit the like. And, and, and don't forget to subscribe. And, and yeah, you know, I got some gifts and stuff. I'm going to give all my favorites subscribe. Oh, man, look, we ain't got time for that. I come here to get some, 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 some healing. Let's get to it. See? See, that's how you know people are shenanigans. Man, please. So, just letting you all know, yes, whoever is living the opposite of God's law, you are going to get rebuked when you come across witches aware. Which is a rare. You go when you when you happen to have a chosen one upon your your presence, and they start rebuking you, and they come tell you, yeah, you wrong, and you this and you that. Actually, that's a blessing for you, because like I said, coming across a real begotten Christian, that's a blessing. It's a rare. You're not gonna have too many people that's gonna be coming around you. You're re rebuking you who claiming that they called and chosen and believers and Christians. <laughs> I know a lot of so-called Christians are bullies. I know a so-called a lot of Christians that like to cheat on their spouses. I know a lot of so-called Christians who like to gossip, like it. They love it. They love it. They sleep it. They eat it. Hmm. So, we're not talking about the Laodiceas, huh? We're not talking about the lukewarmers. We're talking about the Church of Philadelphia's the truth, the truth, which are a rare. 
So when you come across one of us, you better thank God and get your life right. Shalom.